Hello, Tony Burke here. I'm going to take you through a screencast which will show you the process for creating an ePortfolio from an established template. This is specifically for students on level more level four modules, uh, particularly uh, modules ACSS 402 and ACSS 404. Those are the uh, the Introduction to Construction Studies modules. Some of the content of the screencast may be useful for students at levels five and six, but it is um, uh, using a template that's that's set up for level four modules. Okay, well, let's start at the university's homepage, which uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, the link that we're looking for is the link to Gmail and Google Apps, which is the link that you would normally follow to um, uh, to get at your uh, university email. So if we click on that link. Um, the page that we're taken to initially is just a sign-in page, so we're asked to enter our username and password in the normal way. And where we end up um, after we click sign in will largely depend on the browser that you're using and the amount that you have used uh, Google Apps and, and Gmail previously. Um, it's possible that the top of the page that you arrive at looks something like this. Uh, and you'll see a black sort of ribbon along the top of the page and one of the links there is a link to sites. Uh, if you see that you need to, to click on sites. Now it's possible if you're using a different browser, particularly Google Chrome, that you'll see a page that look, might look something like this. Uh, if that's the case then you need to look for uh, that little symbol there which is a sort of a grid of apps and click on that and as you click on it a drop down sort of graphic menu appears and from that menu you need to select sites. Uh, once you've selected sites you're taken to a page that will look something like this and we want to create a new site for our ePortfolio so we simply click on create. We now arrive at a page uh, where from where we can create our site and the first thing we need to do is, is select a template to use. We're going to click on this link here where it says browse the gallery for more and clicking on that opens up a, uh, a sort of a pop-up page and there is a range of templates there to choose from. There are two in particular that I'm going to draw your attention to. One is for students on ACSS 404 and one is for students on ACSS 402. Now the two templates are almost identical but there are some very small differences in the requirements for each module so uh, obviously the templates differ in that respect. For the purposes of this screencast I'm going to base the rest of the presentation on uh, ACSS 404 template but for students on ACSS 402 the procedure is exactly the same. So we select ACSS 404 ePortfolio and we scroll down and we click on the select button and it then indicates that we are proposing to use the ACSS 404 ePortfolio template. The next thing we have to do is to give our site a name. So I'm just going to put in uh, a simple name. Sorry, just get that right. Tony Burks E Portfolio. And once I'm happy with the name of my site, I just click on Create. And you'll see up the top of the page that uh, Google is actually creating my site. So we wait a few moments for the creation to complete and hopefully it should then open the template uh, with, you, with our site created. And there it, there it goes. So whatever name we gave our site will now appear at the top of the page and that will appear at the, in fact at the top of every single page within the website. So um, we've now established a title for our ePortfolio and uh, every, all the sort of the, the structure of the ePortfolio is all in place for us. And you can see that uh, there's a welcome page there and you can see down the left hand side a contents menu. And if you check this against the, uh, the, the checklist in the back of the module handbook you'll see that each section that's listed there aligns with every category of information that you're required to put into your ePortfolio. 
the first thing we're going to do is to sort out the sharing privileges who can actually view our ePortfolio so we click on the share button on the top right hand side and a, a new uh, section of the site opens up um, we just want to make sure that um, the people who can access it are the people that we want to access it currently it is set as a default at all people uh, within the University of Westminster domain who can find your site um, they can also edit it now we don't really want that so we click on change what I'm going to suggest you do is that you select people at the University of Westminster who have the link and in terms of access you change that to can view so that means that anyone within the University of Westminster domain, that's a, any other student or any member of staff to whom you give the specific link can view your ePortfolio. They can't edit it and no one outside the, um, the university can do anything to it. Now if at a later date you want to change the sharing privileges you can do that. But let's click on save just for the moment. Okay, so we're now we now go back to our ePortfolio and the first thing that we're going to do is to start putting some content in. What you'll find in, the, each, of, in each of these sections there is just a, um, a simple explanation of the type of information that you should be including on that page. If we go back to the welcome page it says that you're asked to include here a personal introduction from yourself, a photograph of you and a statement giving an insight into you and your aspirations. So let's just have a go at what's involved there. To edit the page we, we click on this um, uh, pen symbol in the top right hand side. Clicking on that it loads the editor. The first thing we do is clear all the content that is already there. So we simply delete that and now we can start uh, adding in some content of our own. The first thing I'm going to do is put in a photograph. So if we go up to the top left, click on insert, select image and find an image somewhere on our computer that we want to upload. So I've got a, a photograph um, loaded in just into the desktop. Uh, I'll select a profile photograph, open that, it starts to upload it once you're happy with the photograph click OK and it's it's now entered a photograph in the welcome page. We can now start entering some text so um, we we can actually just uh, I've, I've sort of preloaded some information so I'm just going to copy and paste that from a, a Word document go back into the editor add it in there and there's some basic information about me saying who I am, why I'm on the course that I'm on and so on and so on. You can do as, as little or as much as you want to uh, for your welcome page. And then we simply click save, the editor closes and now that content is part of our ePortfolio. We can then go to uh, any other section of the, uh, the ePortfolio so we can go on to course orientation again the process is exactly the same we click on edit to edit the page we clear all the guidance that's already in there again I've got some um, pre-prepared content that I want to stick into that web page so I'm going to copy that go back into the editor add it in there and there's our content notice also that there's an option down below to add files. If I click on that now I can simply add any document that I want to. So for course orientation I'm going to add a copy of my orientation program. It uploads the document and now from the web page there is a link to that document. So again we click Save takes us back to the ePortfolio and there's our web page with a link to a PDF document 
um, and you can do that for as many documents as you want so when you want to add in uh, various documents to provide evidence for your ePortfolio that's all you need to do so really that's that's the process you just uh, carry on doing that for all of the different sections of the ePortfolio if you want to play around with the look and feel of your ePortfolio you can also do that if you click on more up in the top right here go to manage site then um, if you want to change uh, themes and colors and fonts then you can just play around with that and see whether whatever you think looks best for you you're not obliged to stick with the um, the default settings you can also go back into sharing and permissions and change the the people who have access for your or to your ePortfolio because remember that even after you graduate you still have access to this ePortfolio so you might want to show it to employers and the like um, go back into our ePortfolio there click on more again click on edit site layout if you want to play around with the, the way in which the pages are arranged then you can do that you can change the look and feel of the sidebar you can add horizontal navigation you can change the overall width of the site pretty much anything you want to do so again if we happy with that we click close if we want to add in an additional page that's also very easy to do we can just create a new page so we might want to add in a page to tell people about our sporting achievements if we've got any click on create and that has now created a new page and we can add in information there we then simply go to um, save that page click on more go to edit site layout edit the sidebar item the navigation um, contents bar uh, can now be edited add a page we find our page on sporting achievements okay okay and there once we've closed it in the menu we've now got an additional item for sporting achievements if we then decide that we don't want to um, keep that page anymore we go into more we simply click on delete page delete and that page has been deleted so it's, it's entirely flexible what you do with it uh, so I think you'll agree that it's actually a very very simple process and I hope that has been useful in uh, enabling you to, um, uh, to, to develop your ePortfolio. Um, uh, th there's, there's really not too much to, to worry about. Okay, thank you.